G'day, so this is just a short one. Um, I'm just going to cover a few points uh, for some people that are doing weightlifting and stuff like that. There's, there's a lot of confusion out there. Um, a few important points um, that I need to cover. And that is um, that some of the sort of stuff you really need to do to really help you know, your body build up um, tissue and stuff like that. I mean, beyond the, the normal sort of stuff that most of us know about food and food combinations and stuff like that and supplementations and whatever else um, people do out there. Things that are, that probably are more esoteric that people probably aren't aware of are things like the importance of certain types of supplements and, and certain timing of those supplements. Now, most people know about creatine. Um, I'm not going to really get in heavily there. There's a, there's a lot of arguments whether to take creatine before or after. Um, there was a study back in, I think it was 2013, and they sort of said that after in the abstract, but uh, when, you, when you look at the data, it's sort of inconclusive in some regards. In some regards, it's, it's sort of mixed results and it's sort of you drill down and there seems to be a bit of a benefit. It's statistically very um, weak and it sort of goes this way that um, since you've done a number of reps and you've, you've sort of damaged tissue and you, you need more creatine after the fact to sort of do a lot of the repair. And so it's better to take it after than rather before. That's the sort of thinking. Um, and it sort of makes sense in, in, in one regard because most people usually will sort of uh, um, do a creatine load. So they will load up for a couple of days, you know, five to seven days, depending on their body weight. And um, that's critical because um, uh, you basically have to consider a number of factors. Um, if you're a really, if you're a small person, you've got to be probably excreting out about one gram um, per day. If you are a larger person, probably up to two grams per day. Intermediate person in size, probably about one and a half grams per day. So that's a sort of figure you're looking at um, in sort of loss. Uh, creatine, you know, is basically biosynthesized in the key organs, you know, like your liver, your pancreas, um, and your kidneys. But uh, that can be affected, you know, I mean, if you've got kidney issues or you've got pancre um, pancreas issues or you've got liver issues or whatever, it can affect the, the biosynthesis. Um, so that it can vary between person. There's no, you know, easy sort of a number when it comes to creatine. Um, one of the key things, and I'll just look at my figures that I've put up here. Um, in let's I'll just capture that for a second. So this is just quick, you know, um, to work out. Um, this is all you really need to know. Uh, it's about 0 0.03 grams of creatine per kilogram of, of human body weight. Okay. So your requirements per day will be based on this. Um, so it's 70, um, let's say somebody's uh, 70 kilos or 154 pounds. Um, that's the that's sort of average. I'm using average um, sort of uh, weighted individuals, and that'll equal to 2.1 grams. So let's say two grams for for rough for rough measure. So 
the amount that you basically take every day, that's, these are, these are sort of levels of somebody weightlifting. Okay. Cause you'll basically utilize part of that. Plus you'll have a certain level of secretion that will take place. So that sort of covers the sort of levels for both secretion and um, so you've got biosynthesis, you've got secretion and you've got basically what um, uh, your requirements would be to cover um, those, your needs. That's if you've basically saturated your tissue with um, preloading. So you've done something like 25 grams um, to 30 grams for, you know, for a couple of days in that regard. Um, and you've basically, you know, built up the amount, the amount of stores um, in your body. So I'll just actually stop that. Um, I don't need to share that anymore. So I think most people, that's quite clear what the sort of, the sort of amount. Yeah. So, so basically in, when it comes to, uh, there's a number of formulas you can look at on the internet and look at um, lean body mass. So working out what your lean body mass and once you've worked out your lean body mass, usually people are that sort of um, weight, if they're lean and all that, they're probably going to have about 50 odd kilos of lean body mass. So you're looking at um, per kilo of that muscle, you're looking at three grams of creatine. So you need to work out your lean body mass, work out the kilos, um, which is 2.2, one kilo is 2.2 pounds. So for each kilo or 2.2 pounds, you need to basically um, work out how much and then um, let's say you're 50 kilos as an example, that's um, times that's the lean body mass we're talking about um, uh, times the, the, the basically, you know, three, so looking 150. So you would basically divide that. Let's say you are doing it over five days. That's about 30 grams per day loading. You're doing it over seven because some people, you know, it's, it can be a bit hard on the stomach or stuff like that. Different people, even though there is not real any real science that actually shows that there is an issue because a lot of people that actually are doing a lot of body building are actually consuming a lot of other foods at the same time while they've been doing this, this loading. And so is it all the other stuff they're doing or is it the creatine? There's a lot of myth making and I've actually tried doing a bit of um, sort of loading without a lot of food and I've actually found you know, you can do quite a bit without really no real issues in that regard. So it may be the other factors that are sort of, you know, it, you do need to hydrate a bit. Um, I would say just to be on the safe side in terms of, or take a bit extra magnesium, you know, just to, um, cause it, there's a tendency in some people to basically, um, you know, increase the, you know, let's say, um, reduce the amount of fluids, which basically it doesn't not, we're not talking about dehydration here, but it may affect the stool, um, making it a bit harder, um, potentially be constipating. Um, it does vary between people. Some people, not an issue. Other people, um, I've noticed that I can actually really get severe and I literally have to drink quite a bit of water just to basically avoid any constipating effects. Um, but, so there are variations between people, different biology, different bodies. So they're going to be variations. So basically, you know, do take that into consideration. So that's the sort of thing you need to, you need to know just about the amount that each um, uh, kilo of your tissue requires three grams. So you can work out your loading. Um, you can do it over a longer period of time. You don't have to do it five or seven days. You can do it over, you know, two weeks or more. You know, it's not, a, it's not basically um, a, a race in that regard. 
you can basically, when you're using it, let's say you require two grams or three grams if you're a bigger if you're a bigger person um, per day. Well, you could always split it. You know, one and a half, one before, and then two after if you're on the three, um, half before, like half an hour before, and you know. So that's up to you how you want to do um, go about it. Whether you want to take that study, that 2013 study, serious and take it after. It's up to you. I'll leave it up to, to you. Um, currently, the science isn't like rock solid on that. So, and if you're already loaded, is it going to make a difference? Because you've already got quite a bit of creatine from loading and you're maintaining it by taking it. Because even, because the thing is, these people in the study group, on the days that they were resting, they were taking creatine anytime. They were told just take it anytime. So, um, there's a lot of confounding there and, you know, I've got a bit of question marks the way with very poor, um, sort of the data had very poor statistical strength, but they were claiming that after is better. So it may be marginal and just because you, you may need a bit extra, like a, a top up, um, because of the depletion um, factor and that may help with with both basically healing and repair and all that and recovery. So that would be the only reason that I would sort of take it after um, in that regard. Because remember, um, you basically are splitting off each time you basically, let's say you, you're, you, you're generating ATP. That ATP is basically used by the muscles that doing the contractions. And then it will basically split off a phosphate. So you end up with adeno, adenosine diphosphate. So with two phosphates and you basically, that needs a phosphate to basically then again become ATP. So that's what sort of you get tired and stuff like that. What creatine can do is add that additional phosphate and actually give you more ATP and potentially longer being able to do um, potentially more reps for longer and stuff like that. Whether that's a good idea, that's another thing. You know, um, you know there is uh, diminishing returns sometimes in in terms of doing extra stuff and all that. That can actually basically, you know, injuries and all sorts of things. So depending on your age and stuff like that, um, you could probably get away um, with it or not. Those there's a lot of question marks when it comes to um, sport, sports physiology. Um, we haven't really nailed things really down um, severely um, in any any way. So if I was you, I wouldn't basically, you know, take, you should take everything with a bit of grain of salt in that regard. Now, a few other points. Now, we've covered that I just wanted to clarify a bit on creatine in that regard. So now when I look at some other factors, other things that are really important is you guys may, you're aware of um, my nuclei in, you know, and their importance in building muscle. Um, there's also the actual satellite cells, really important as well. Um, they can actually give a big anabolic boost. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that um, while there are some nutraceuticals out there that attempt to basically support those things, the only real um, thing that really actually increases both, it activates um, satellite cells and actually improves um, and upregulate sort of my nuclei is nitric oxide. So whatever actually increases nitric oxide basically improves um, uh, this area as well, the physiology. So what is the, the big factor here? Uh, well, L-arginine. L-arginine really um, helps here. The problem with the L-arginine is that if you take it orally, Usually, um, the liver gets first dibs, and the liver is a really hog when it comes to L-arginine. So, 
it really just will try and take as much as possible and won't um, and not as much will get into the bloodstream to give you that nitric oxide boost. So what is better is a supplement, L-citrulline. So L-citrulline is much better. And uh, it's something that I've basically taken for a number of years, but that as a vasodilator for my heart, obviously, you know, that was my focus. That's the one that I usually take L-citrulline malate. And, oh shit, no, oh, fell over, doesn't matter. And pretty much that actually goes right into the bloodstream and in the bloodstream it gets converted to L-arginine. The nice thing about that is you end up getting a bigger amount of L-arginine in there and then a bigger boost, which is what you want because then you're actually supporting these now when to take l arginine well i would take it before 30 minutes before in order to get around into your blood vessels so when i go when i do any exercise whether it's aerobic or um weightlifting it's always 30 minutes before that i take and i'm not a big bloke so i usually take about a um a gram or two um, some people, you know, bigger blokes can take, you know, um, two or three or potentially up to five. Um, you've got to be careful with l citrulline um, at being a vasodilator that if you're on blood, mesh, blood pressure medication, um, you could feel a bit dizzy because it will lower your blood pressure. So you've got to be very careful that... Um, you deal, you know, you deal with you, that you don't basically overdo it and sort of um, learn how to manage it properly. Obviously, if you're, if you're into bodybuilding and stuff like that, you're probably not on these meds. You're probably healthier, hopefully, or you're moving in that direction and you're bringing down those, um, those sort of tablets, which hopefully then, um, but if you're sort of middle-aged like me, um, go for the one gram, you know, go a bit lower and work your way up. You're not a young bloke. Um, so take it easy, see how you feel. Um, and, uh, you know, slowly build up and, uh, you know, um, listen to your body, basically. Us old boys have to listen to our bodies. So do keep that in, in mind. And especially if you're on meds, um, and you're taking this sort of stuff, uh, whether it's taurine or whether it's um, L-citrulline, you do want to make sure that you are adjusting your dose of any blood pressure medication um, and getting it, getting yourself checked on a more regular basis to make sure the adjustments are appropriate. For, you know, so we don't want people passing out or anything like that. So that's pretty much covers that part now i'll go on, i'll get on to a few other things when it comes to um sort of there's a there's two schools of thought about whether to take um something like whey protein before or after i've sort of you know sort of said a bit of whey before is not a bad idea. Um, it gives you a bit of a an extra, um, you know, insulogenic push. I'm not talking about s smaller amounts. And then after that, there's there's good research to show that having a bit right after within the next 90 minutes, once you've done your reps is also a good idea if you're combining it with leucine because basically leucine uptake only happens within 90 minutes after so after 90 minutes if you're putting leucine in your body you're just throwing money down the toilet it's a waste of a waste of time so if you're going to use you know branch branch chain amino acids they should be used within half an hour to an hour after you've done your reps basically that's the big, the time when you're going to get the biggest uptake. 
And that is also the time that I would basically be throwing in something like, um, you know, something like taurine as well. And the reason for that is because taurine is a, an amino transporter. I know it does a whole lot of other things. It can lower blood pressure. It can do a whole lot of other things, both for the brain um, and all sorts of other tissue, the heart and everything else. But we're just focusing here on not the sort of the sort of anti-inflammatory and other therapeutic effects of taurine. We're looking at basically, and that's another factor, um, where it's not like an antioxidant, which is really good. So, because we want a bit of ROS in there to basically to get better results from the um, from the the exercise that we've done, the the reps that we've done. So it's really important that basically we have that, but we also have some support on repair side. We have a bit of that um, taurine in the system for those purposes. So just coming back a bit, um, taurine here is primarily the focus is to actually to boost the actual amino transport into those muscles and that's why we're putting it in there um depending on your size one gram one to two grams um or two to three grams or three to five grams if you're a big guy like you know sean baker or something like that again it does lower blood pressure so keep that in mind um so if you're either taking some meds or you have issues with blood pressure whatsoever. Um, you got to be very careful, pace yourself and listen to your body. Um, so keep that in mind. The, the other um, good thing about combining, um, you're going to get a, with a way using way you're going to get this big, massive sort of boost um in insulin at the time when also um your brain chain amino acids are going to basically play that role now that's for guys that want to really build up and bulk up okay you know they will take a bit more l-citrulline they will take a bit more of these things usually younger blokes and stuff like that that are going to do that for us old old farts like myself and others that are in their mid 50s like me, like i am and that you know I, you know, I just take a gram. Um, I just, um, I'm not that, that phased. I'm not out there to be, to become, you know, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger or anything like that. So I'm just basically just trying to build up a bit of muscle, you know, um, look okay. Um, my partner doesn't want me to bulk up in any big way. So I would like to bulk up a bit more, but she doesn't want to. So yeah. She won that argument. <laughs> so in that regard, um, you know, you, you you do what you want to do. Um, I will do what I want to do. So I'm just interested in maintaining good muscle mass and stuff like that. Other supplements to look at is, is basically boron, really good. Um, MK4, really good. Vitamin D, critical, you know get it in there. Um, many people are deficient and vitamin D plays a big role in both, you know, bone health and also muscle health. Really important. There are shitloads of vitamin D receptors in muscle fibers. So that should be telling you something. It's really important that you basically support um, your body um, with vitamin D. So keep the vitamin D up. You definitely, de um, uh, definitely also need the retinol. So, um, keep the retinol up, whether you get it from liver, a lot, a lot of the old bodybuilders used to use liver, you know, and some cod liver oil. It depends. It varies on the person, their preference, their taste, buds and stuff like that. Egg yolks are very good also for retinol. Um, which is really important that you get those in there as well. So those are sort of things that you really need to focus on the fat soluble vitamins and the water, some of the water soluble vitamins. Um, you will need more riboflavin as well. 
even if you don't have an MTHFR issue, you will still need far more. Um, if you're consuming more protein rich foods, you will need more riboflavin. So keep that in mind. Um, it's a requirement um, for basically dealing with, with those sort of foods. So more protein, more riboflavin. If you don't get enough riboflavin, you're not going to basically um, be able to support the muscle protein synthesis to the same degree. So more critical for us oldies as well, but still even for the younger crowd that are trying to build up muscles a bit faster and stuff like that. So those are the sort of um, things that I would be focusing on. Um, then every, you know, if you really want to be bulking up quite a bit, which is not what I'm interested. I'm just interested in basically having a steak and eggs and leaving it at that and just getting some over a couple of hours, some muscle protein synthesis that I will get. And I'm happy with that result. It may not be ecstatic, but that's me. Um, now, if you, on the other hand, want to really increase, you're looking at, um, I wouldn't go over 40, 40 grams of protein every two hours. And the reason for that is pretty simple. Your muscles can probably take about up to about 20 odd grams and a bit more than the rest will, you know, will get shuttled around. Some of it will be used for enzymes that you'll be um, producing, um, other tissue um, for repair purposes and all sorts of other factors um, that other cellular requirements around the body. So if you're putting in 40 grams and 40 grams and 40 grams every couple of hours, um, you will get um, good results in that regard. Don't go crazy on the protein still within the day. Stick to the sort of, for your caloric requirements, stick to the round about the 35 um, uh, grams at maximum 40 per as a percent of your um, uh, caloric requirements and for women much lower, you know, in, in that regard. I mean, women should never really go over um, 30. I would basically say to women stick to about 25 at, you know, and it depends if you're a really large, bigger woman, maybe, you know, um, you can handle a bit more. So, so in that regard, you need fat, um, uh, fat, you know, fat and, um, and, and basically protein go together really, you know, I mean, a whole lot of enzymatic pathways and a whole lot of mechanisms in the body designed for both of them. So if you're basically just giving yourself just protein, that's rubber, rabbit starvation. It's not healthy. You need fat. Very important. Remember, all your tissue is made of cholesterol, fats, and proteins. They are the key building blocks. So you need fat. Do not fear fat. Okay? Um, and as long as you're basically taking a quick-acting insulogenic um, substance like, um, like whey and not something that actually like glucose that stays in the system longer. And that's the reason why I said to people that, you know, if you're going to use whey, use it strategically as a short term thing, you know, either be before some of it to get that anabolic, because you basically get this really big spike of insulin, then it drops. And you, and basically then you don't get the additional an anabolism. So after that, if you're good, if you're basically trying to bulk up, obviously you need a second dose, half an hour to an hour after, plus with a branch chain amino acid um, to basically really, because that's the, the, the Goldilocks time to basically get the most um, leucine uptake. Um, so that's really important. But uh, then really you need to get the, the additional stuff, depending on how many every two hours, depending on what your requirements for the day are. So how much protein you've had and what, what your requirements, exceeding your requirements, you know, I mean, the body's just going to waste, get, get, try to excrete it. So it's a waste of, waste of money 
and I, I will stick to, to real food in terms of protein because you're going to get fat. You're going to get a whole lot of other elements in terms of nutrients that the body needs. Um, I'm not really in a big supporter of protein powders. Um, they, they have their place as to add um, a bit of bulk in there, but really, guys, you really have to focus on good nutrition because that's what makes healthy tissue in the long run um, and maintains healthy tissue as well. So hope that sort of uh, provides you guys with a bit of a scope a bit of information, just general information in that regard. Um, this is part of a series that I'm going to do, which has to do with weightlifting and, um, but more the nutritional side and things that, and biohacks and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I've given you some stuff, some ideas about uh, l citrulline and stuff like that as a booster for both satellite cells and my nuclei. I would um, consider, consider that, um, but for younger people and people that are, that are really want to build up and don't have any blood pressure issues, less of a problem to go to higher doses. Um, you don't want to go over five. Um, there are diminishing returns. So, you know, be sensible, basically. Be very sensible with these things. There is only so much you can put in the system before basically then it becomes your body counteracts and basically you get sort of negative feedback. So, you know, more is, is it necessary better? You know, so consider, as I said, if you're a smaller person, one to two, if you're a, sort of in the middle range, sort of um, two, maybe three or two and a half, you know, if you're a bigger bloke, you know, like three to five or three to four um, grams of l citrulline. So you want some level of vasodilation, but not, you know, excessive amounts, especially with some of the other um, blood pressure lowering effects of taurine and stuff like that. So keep that in mind. And the taurine really has to come after, as I said, um, when you take the whey and when you, t um, uh, when you take basically the branched chain amino acid, that's when you want, or let's say you're not going to do that. And you're an older person that doesn't want to really bulk up in any regards but just wants to protect themselves against sarcopenia and osteoporosis long term, then what you should do is when you have that steak, before you have that steak, take the taurine because it's an amino transporter. It will actually improve the uptake of those aminos. So, and that's what you want. So just keep that in mind, you old boys and girls. So hope that sort of, uh, um, cleared up a few things that have to do with um, with certain types of things that we can combine and use um, and has clarified a few points about um, creatine and, uh, and at the same time when I'm talking about creatine in on your rest days still take it within light you know daytime you know, don't take it at night, you know, because it does affect, you remember you're building up phosphate and that actually works with the circadian rhythms with melatonin. So, you know, you don't want to be, you want to be reducing the amount of energy availability. So as you're getting tired and sleepy and melatonin goes up because good sleep is also very important for um, good results in the long run for good tissue repair and healing and improvement in body composition. So that's the other, that's the other part. So keep these sort of things that you take in to support within daytime, always within daytime, not in the evenings, um, late, late at night in that regard with taurine being the exception. But uh, 
Um, that's for people that are not into bodybuilding or anything like that. Um, taurine can be taken later, uh, later on. Um, it doesn't, uh, for some people it actually improves their sleep quality. Um, so it depends. I get different feedback from different people. So it seems to vary to no effect or in terms of sleep quality and some testify that it does improve their sleep quality. Look, and they vary when they take it. So I have absolutely no idea. And I don't think there's anything really in the literature. I've taken a look, trying to find things. And I can tell you there's, there's not much there. I just think that basically it helps um, brain function. You know, I mean, taurine is littered. It's very dense in the heart and in the brain. So it's really playing important roles in both those tissues. So very important. Um, also helps with, you know, the, the protein, the, um, the amylase. So helps reduce those as well. So yeah, it has, has positive effects in that regard. So um, in which way it's, it's, it's sort of uh, whether you should be taking some additional in the evening. I don't know. Um, I think if you take, you take it um, in the daytime, I don't think there's going to be much of a difference, to be honest, um, in that regard. And if you're doing weightlifting, then you definitely want to take it in the in the daytime, right right after your um, your reps and stuff like that, to get the the big sort of uh, um, to to assist with that to to transport those aminos in um, to the muscle tissue. So that's where my focus would be anyway. So anyway, I think we've. I've covered this pretty much pretty well um, in terms of those points that I wanted to make. There will be a second and third part. Um, uh, the second part will cover my famous smoothies and some of the, and some of the supplements that people in bodybuilding use um, additional to this sort of stuff, some of the nutrition and stuff like that. And the third We'll, we'll cover some information about some dangerous type of methods that some people employ in body in weightlifting, some techniques that they do which can be problematic and damaging um, to tissue in the in the body, so it can be counterproductive in the long run, and especially if, if people want to have good long term um, muscle skeletal health. They shouldn't be doing these things. Um, so that that will be the third part of this short series. Um, if it look, if it gets, if I get good results from this first one and the second one and the third one, I may do other subject matters as well that people may um, want a, a more in depth uh, sort of video about. So. But the focus at this stage will be on these three areas. There are a whole lot of other people around the internet um, that have done a lot of um, good stuff in this regard. And some of the old bodybuilder sites as well have got some really good techniques, some of the more traditional techniques, which were much safer. Um, and so I would, I would say to people, you know, probably Google and find, find those old techniques and uh, and employ those but uh, if people want it, um, sort of explanations about specific things or there are things that they would like researched or there are things that they've heard um, like bullshit or things that they think may be bullshit that people have been talking out there on the interwebs and then come back to me and actually ask me and say well Harry is this the case? Is there research to support what these people are claiming? I don't mind doing a short little video looking, um, uh, doing some research and seeing what's, what's out there um, and whether it's sort of bona fide or not. Anyway, 
thanks guys for um for listening take care and we will chat um soon see yous